What's up, Math 8? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today we're going to look at Lesson 5.4, Classifying Real Numbers and What Those Mean. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill out this chart that you have in your notes. So this chart represents all real numbers, meaning they're not imaginary. They are actual numbers that you're going to be able to see, not a concept. The next thing we're going to place is irrational. Irrational numbers are going to be here in their own space. The reason why they'd be called irrational numbers is because they are opposite from rational numbers. Um, examples of irrational numbers could be pi, because if you've ever talked about pi or tried to figure out what pi is equal to, we normally see it as 3.14, but it does, keep it does keep going on and it does not repeat. Another one we might see is non-perfect square roots, like the square root of 2 or the square root of 3. You can also have... Um, like non-perfect cube roots, like the cube root of two is not gonna be an actual decimal that repeats or ends. So those are examples of irrational. On the left side though, we have four separate boxes. We're gonna start with the outside and go in. We have rational numbers first. And with rational numbers, those are numbers that you can write as decimals, like positive one half or negative one half or 0 0.2 repeating, or 1 third. So these are all fractions that can be written as decimals and vice versa. Going backwards, so we've done real numbers, irrational, and rational. The next section we have are integers. And integers are just going to include negative whole numbers. Okay. Inside integers, we're going to have whole numbers, and whole numbers are going to be included in that integer list, but they're going to start with 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. The last piece are natural numbers, and this is what you learned to count. So notice how natural numbers is the smallest box, and that's because that, can, that contains the smallest amount of numbers in that set. So natural numbers start with 1 and go up like you're counting. Whole numbers start with zero and include one, two, and three. So all whole numbers are natural numbers. So you can go out to in, but not everything can be in to out. As you continue to go, integers include whole numbers and negatives, and then rational numbers include integers and also decimals. Let's make sure we pause the video here, have all these things written down, and when you're ready to go on, click play. So what we're going to do is we're going to classify each real number as as many of these as possible. The first one we have is the square root of 12. This is not a perfect square, so this one's going to be an irrational number. Next up, we have a repeating decimal. It's negative 0.25. Since it's a repeating decimal, there is a way to write it as a fraction. We're not going to learn how to do that today, but that is considered just a rational number. The next one we have is the negative square root of 9. And if you solve that, that's going to be equal to negative 3. It is not a rational number, not a whole number, but it is an integer. And because it's an integer, it is also going to be considered a rational number. I'm going to draw a line down here to separate rational and irrational because not all, everything will be in that section. Okay. So negative 3 is considered an integer, but it's also considered rational because we can take negative 3 and write it over 1. And there it is written as a fraction. 72 over 4, if we divide that, 4 will go into 72 uh, 18 times. So 18 is a natural number, which means it's also a whole number, which means it's an integer, which also means it's rational. The next one we have is pi. Pi is not repeating. It does not end. So we're going to call pi as an irrational number. Next up, we have this decimal. Notice how the decimal, it does have a pattern, but there's no way that we can put the repeating bar over it. So we would also have to consider this as irrational because it's not ending and it's not repeating using that repetition bar, the bar notation. The negative square root of 196, if you go back to your square root um, list that I gave you, and you just find the square root of 196, it's going to be 14. So this is actually going to equal negative 14. 
negative 14 would be considered not a natural or a whole number because those have to be positive or start at zero, but it is an integer. And because it's an integer, it's also considered rational because negative 14 can be written as a fraction as negative 14 over one. The cube root of two is not a perfect cube. It's gonna give us a decimal that doesn't repeat, doesn't end, so that's considered irrational. Negative 15 over negative three is actually equal to a positive five. So that is considered natural number, whole number, integer, and rational. And then the last one is just a decimal, 4.8 over 2.4. So if you just take those and divide them, you're gonna get the whole number two. So that is a natural, whole, integer, and rational number, okay? What we're going to do here is just practice a little bit more with squares and cubes. So let's go ahead and pause here. Try to remember what you can, and when you're ready to check, click play. I know we just did 14 squared. That's 196. We've got 17 squared next to it, so we'll go and do that one, 289. And then just going backwards, 11 squared is 121. 6 squared is 36. 2 squared is 4. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 225, that's going to be 15. The square root of 324 is going to be 18. And the square root of 400 is 20. 3 cubed is going to be 27. Negative 5 cubed, that's like saying 5, negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. That should give us a negative 125. We've got 8 cubed, which is 512. Then we have the cube root of negative 64, that's negative four. And then the cube root of 729 is equal to nine. So those are just a few practice questions that we had. That's gonna conclude our video on, um, com not comparing, classifying real numbers.